Hi guys, so today I'll be reviewing uh, the Diamond Press Halloween Border Dies and Stamps. So these were sent free of charge by Diamond Press for my review and all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box for uh, this item on HSN will be a an affiliate link, which means I will make a small commission if you were to purchase through those links. Um, what's really cute about this is like, I already have the pop-up card that we did the other day and I was like, you know what? I need to decorate the front of this thing. So let's use these border dies. I think that's what we'll do today. So, uh, let me open this up. Uh, okay, so, um, let's see here. Oh, I do want to mention that the little images that they have on this, on HSN, are super adorable. So make sure to check those out. There's a lot of great inspiration on cards in that little section there, in the description. Super cute. Uh, let me open this up. And, so, the dies. We have a little, um like fence here, like a wrought iron fence. We have the cute little pumpkins that actually have stamps that coordinate to put their little faces on here all at once, which is really fun. This is like a little set of little kids. I'll show you in just a minute on the stamps. We have um, the cat, the larger bat. I know some of the other sets have bats and they're a little smaller, so this is nice to kind of coordinate with those two. And then this banner. I love these banners, okay? They uh, had a, something similar in a different set, a little bit smaller. I love this kind of thing. So because it makes like a little 3D banner. It always comes with uh, another cutting folder. Um, I totally went backwards this time. Usually I start with the instructions and go the other way, but here we go. And then we have the stamps, and I think today what I'm going to do is use the pumpkins. I'm going to use the, um, the raw iron frame because it kind of echoes the little frame in the inside of the card. The frame fence is what I was trying to say. And then I think I'm going to use this little uh, grave site here. So... Uh, We'll get to that in just a minute. We have trick or treat, beware, and of course these little words you can stamp, you know, within the um, banner. Really cool. And then we have the little uh, inspo sheet or instruction sheet, just depending on how you want to look at that. Really cute to have it with the little cat walking on there and all these sweet things and then showing you about the pumpkins and the little kids, which is adorable in them. The and then we have that banner that's awesome. So um, what I'm gonna do is kind of echo the colors that are in the inside of the card. And so I know the fence on the inside of the card is purple, so I think I'm going to make the wrought iron fence purple, even though that's kind of different, yes. <laughs> and I'm going to cut these guys out with orange. And um, we will ink up, you know, I'm not sure if, uh, I might use some embossing powder on this, we'll see. Um, yeah, so let's just get started. So I'm just grabbing all the scrap paper. So this is not a scrap paper, but this is from that same... Um, Chillingsworth uh, Manor paper. I still have some ink on here from the uh, review I did earlier, so I'm just going to put some black ink around the edges just to make it kind of fun. And I'm going to put this to the side for right now because I'm not sure how I'm going to stamp the little graves there or tombstones. Um, okay, I'm going to put this to the side for a second. And then I just have the scraps from yesterday. I just wanted to see exactly what I need. So that one will work. And then I have some orange here. So I'm going to cut out. I'll probably use the banner because I really want you guys to see how that works. It's so cute. So let me put this here. And this guy. I don't really have to take those. Those I can just hold on, run through, but that's okay. Just in case. All right, we got that. Got my trusty folder here, and <clears throat> and people are like, "Oh, this is so fun projects to put us into the fall mood," and I'm like, "Oh, it is almost fall, or I guess it's fall. I don't know." <laughs> The kids go back to school very shortly here in just a couple weeks. By that I mean online, thank goodness. Here we have but that. Um, we have this. I'm going to cut my little pumpkin, so I'll cut this out and I'll be right now, back. This one, I'm curious to see how, if I can stamp the faces all at once. Let's see here. So cute, look at that. <laughs> I just picked it up and it's sitting there waiting for me. Adorable. Let me put this to the side. Okay. I'm going to have to bring up my big boy to stamp this. Where is... Okay, here we go. This is just so cute. 
So if you want to use a stamp positioner, of course that's up to you. I'm trying to see exactly where this is supposed to be, to be stamped. Wow. That is adorable. I don't know if I'm going to get them lined up exactly right when I come back, but there it is. Okay. I am going to use Versafine. But if you want to use like a distress ink or anything else, it'll look nice. Because either way, if it looks distressy, it's a Halloween card. Or if it looks, you know, perfectly pristine stamped, then that's nice too. So hopefully I got them all good and ready. I am going to stare down <laughs> right into this. And hopefully I'm kind of looking at the pumpkins. Oh, I'm already there. <laughs> I was like, I'm still trying to line it up. I'm like, oh, I'm already at them. Again, if you prefer to use a stamp positioner, then you know, you can do that. Oh my gosh, look at that. So what I like about this one, again, um, is that I can kind of manipulate it as I get closer. If I get closer and I can see it's kind of off, I'm like, okay, I can move it a little bit. So that's really cute. Um, let me think about what we want to do for the uh, tombstones and I'll be right back. Our little guys. These guys are going to be in front. This can kind of be sticking out right here, I think. Something like that. Let me think if I'll use the banner, I'll bring this down just a little bit. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna stamp it right there. I'm gonna take my embossing buddy, which I always forget to use, because I am going to emboss this in a minute. We'll see what happens. And I'm gonna use Versafine because it stays sticky for a while, but you can use a pigment ink or whatever ink you like. But since Versafine, like I said, stays pretty sticky, I'm able to do this and then go right into the embossing powder. Straighten that out. I guess it doesn't have to be super straight because they can be a little crooked. So cute. Um, where's my little, here we go. And because I'm so cheap, I keep using the same <laughs> uh, coffee filter over and over. This is just clear embossing powder, but you can top it with black embossing powder if you want. Um, look at that. That embossing buddy does work wonders. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool and I will be right back. I do wanna show you how it changes color. Obviously, it'll show underneath the black ink. You can see. All right, I'll keep working on that. So that just gives a little extra, you know, something, a little, makes it stand out a little more. So that's kind of what I wanted to do with that, of course. And I'm just going to start sticking this down. What cute tags I know on the back. It's always a bummer when people make paper. So you're like, ah, I don't want to use that. <laughs> I want to use both sides. Well, we can't use both sides, can we? All right. And again, if you're not good with matting, then go ahead and use a wet glue so you can kind of manipulate it. So I'd like to turn this over and then give it a squish. That's that. And then these guys, I'm just going to stick them down and it'll take me a second because I'm going to take my glue and a fine tip applicator. Of course, you can use whatever Xyron goodness you have there, but I'm just going to go around this. I'm standing up right now and I don't know why I'm on my tippy toes. <laughs> I just realized my calves, I'm over here like, oot. All right, let's put this guy down. And maybe the pumpkin should have a little lift on them. I think that's what we'll do. So I'll put this kind of down here. So I went a little bit lower with these guys than I wanted because I was going to use the banner and I was like, well, I kind of changed my mind. So I brought it down a little bit lower than I originally planned. And if you wanted to, you can keep stamping the little um, tombstones here and there, you know. <clears throat> and then these guys I'm going to pop up with some dimensional adhesive or whatever it is that you like to use. Oh my gosh, so cute. 
Okay, uh, let me grab some paper for the uh, banner. This kind of scrap of green paper. I don't know that's going to be coordinating too well, but we will try it. I'm going to put this to the side for now. And I selected um, Have a Spooky Halloween from the stamp set. We're just going to cut this out first and then I'll stamp it. That way you can kind of see where you're stamping. Since it is a solid die, it'd be a little harder to tell. I love these little banners. I still have the yellow one that I cut out from that last kit um, sitting here. It's a little tiny yellow banner. All right. So, super cute, and what you're going to do, well, we'll do it in just a second after I stamp this, but i um, just going to come in here and just stamp that up. Again, you can use a stamp positioner if you want to put that little item in your stamp positioner, line up your clear stamp, and then ink it up. But I'm going to eyeball it. And that looks good right there. Pretty good. And let's use a little, a little distressing. Just so it's not so crisp. And I'll probably do a little more distressing once I'm done because you're gonna fold this a little bit and it gives you a little dimension and makes it look a little different. Okay. So fold that back and fold that front. And that's it. Just a little something. So you can still stick this down super flat. You can leave some dimension. You can do however you like. So I just need to distress that little area. Oh, I love it. I'm not sure how I want to stick it down though. Do I want? Okay. So I'm gonna put a lot of dimension on it. Obviously, if you don't want to do that, you're gonna send it through the uh, mail. You want to flatten it out a little bit and go ahead and do that. I do love. I want to say the style of this. I love the way the little jack o' lanterns kind of go off the edge of your standard A2 size card. So cute. Okay, I'll put that there. Put a little dimensional adhesive to keep it up, just to give it a little support. So cute. Again, I'm giving it a lot of dimension, but look how cute that is. All right, I don't want to keep squishing these guys. So there's our card. Again, just the borders uh, set. And then on the inside, I have my little 3D pop-up, which is super cute. Oh my gosh. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> All right, guys. The links will be in the description box. Thanks so much, Diamond Press, for saying these for my review. And I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.